followers. I'm Michael Gage. Welcome to MCTV Sports. He's Matt, and today we're going to be talking about fantasy football. After an eventful week one, we have a lot to talk about, so let's go right into it. Matt, I'm going to have you start with your standout performer of the week. All right, I think, I think Josh Jacobs is my standout player of the week from the Las Vegas Raiders. I think he proved Sunday that he can handle the RB1 position in Vegas. 93 yards on 23 attempts, including three touchdowns, was a career game high for him. Mm -hmm. um, shoulder fracture sidelined him for three of the Raiders' last four games last year. Um, probably would have won rookie of the year, honestly. Um, but I think that this game, starting off week one, proved that there won't be much of a sophomore slump for him, hopefully. <laughs> and then for me, the clear-cut best player of the league was Devontae Adams. Uh, he put up impressive numbers. I believe it was 14 catches, 156 yards, and two touchdowns. And that was a total of 41.6 points in PPR scoring. And this incredibly strong performance to help carry not only the Packers to win, but me to win in my fantasy league. Over you, right? Yes. Yes. So. Yep. And then after week one, he's tied for first in receptions, second in yards, and first and tied for first in receiving touchdowns. All right. Here are the top 10 players of the week in PPR scoring leagues. First, as I mentioned, Devontae Adams, 41.6. Second, Josh Jacobs, 35.9. Calvin Ridley with 33.9. Russell Wilson, fourth, 31.8 points. Adam Thielen, who's also on my team, number five, 31 points. Aaron Rodgers, 30.8 points. DeAndre Hopkins on the new team, the Cardinals, showing that he doesn't need, he doesn't need the Texans anymore, dropping 29.1 points. Christian McCaffrey, 28.4. Josh Allen, 28.2, and Darius Slayton, Giants receiver, Stan, or I guess he's breaking out this year, 28.2. All right, now we're going to move on to the bust of the week. I'm going to start. So my bust of the week was Baker Mayfield. And as a Browns fan, this hits extra close to home for me. Every year you just expect for the, him to play better, for the Browns to play better. But once again, once again they fall short, he fell short. He went 21 of 39 for 189 yards, throwing one touchdown and one interception. This tallied together for a whopping 9.86 points. He all, Justin Tucker almost outscored him. In addition to this disappointing performance, the Browns lost 38-6 after talking, talking about how they're gonna be better this year. Baker's slimmed down, Baker's faster. Well, it's just not, not, not a great look for the Browns right now. And then this move, the Browns, to 0 15 and 1 in week one games since 2004. All right, enough about the Browns. Now, Matt, tell me who was your bust of the week? I don't know if we can say enough about the Browns yet. Um, I hate to do this to you, Mike, but I think my bust is going to be Nick Chubb. Um, finished sixth among halfbacks last year, regardless of the Browns' record. Um, 60 yards and a fumble for 5.6 fantasy points in week one is just not what his fantasy owners wanted. It's probably going to scare them because they probably drafted him first or second round if I had to guess. Mm -hmm. um, probably didn't help that he was running against one of the league's top defenses in the Ravens. Um, I don't think that you should be scared yet. I think that he's a good enough running back where there's no need to worry. I think that he'll prove himself second week and on, honestly. But I think for week one, he's definitely my bust. Yeah, and he actually, he was actually outrushed by Kareem Hunt, his teammate, and he only had, he only had 10 carries. And I feel like if you're the Browns, you've got to get Nick Chubb more carries because he's really your best player, and he could really carry that offense if you let him. Definitely. And so now we're going to talk about how our own teams did. And actually, one of our leagues, Matt and I, played against each other. So first off, I'm in two fantasy leagues, and I cruised to comfortable victories in both, despite lackluster play from Baker Mayfield, as I mentioned, and the Chicago defense only got me three points in the other league. But despite those performances, I was able to beat Matt and win in my other league thanks to Devontae Adams in both leagues. So now Matt, let's hear your side of the story. All right, you take away Aaron Jones and Adam Thielen, and I probably would have won this week. But the thing is, is that I was projected high. I was projected higher than you, but Cooper Cup and Keenan Allen couldn't, couldn't contribute what they were projected to. Got me collectively 15 points between the two of them. Um, I had Deshaun Watson, I was happy with him. Um, especially against the Chiefs and Alvin Kamara, definitely like his performance kind of put me to rest. I was a little nervous drafting him. Mm -hmm. um, I just think that you know let's let's easy up on the on the loss because I probably would have minus those two players. I probably would have 
I probably would have won. I mean, the Browns were projected to do better than 38-6, to six, but projections <laughs> don't seem to matter too much. <laughs> and then, so, one of our last segments here is we're going to talk about what players we think will have good games this upcoming week. So for me, I picked out two players that I think will have big games in week two. Uh, first off, Uh, first off, I picked uh, Chiefs receiver Tyreek Hill because Tyreek Hill came off a mediocre week for his standards. He only had a few catches for four to six yards and one touchdown. And so I expect, I expect the Chiefs to look his way this week. Uh, even against a strong Chargers defense, I expect Tyreek to at least do better than last week. And then secondly, I see the 49ers defense having a big week against Sam Darnold and the New York Jets. Jets offense has really been struggling. The re their leading rusher is Frank Gore, not even Le'Veon Bell. And I expect Nick Bosa to put a lot of pressure on Darnold and the Jets offensive line. And even without Richard Sherman, uh, I can't remember his injury, but he's out this week. I expect the 49ers to lock down a league Jets receiving core. Matt? Yeah, I, I agree with those. I think, like I said earlier, I think Nick Chubb, if you give him more carries, especially against a week's average at best Cincinnati defense, I think he'll, I think he'll start to go off. Um, Raheem Mostert had a great week one, and I think he'll continue that especially against the Jets. And I mean, I'm a Pats fan, as much as this pains me to say, I, I put a lot of faith in the Bills offense this week. Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs had a great week one. I think that week two, they'll, they'll keep that going, especially against the Dolphins. Thank you for tuning into MCTV Sports. We look forward to not only bringing you more fancy football coverage, but more Merrimack sports coverage once those start up again. For MCTV Sports, I'm Michael Gage. I'm Matt Gagnon. And we'll see you next time.